Hey guys, welcome back to another Modern Warfare 2 video. And today's video is really exciting. We got some new information about multiplayer. So Call of Duty's put out a new blog post talking about multiplayer. We're gonna be talking about game modes, maps, uh, perks, field upgrades, kill streaks, as well as camos and the mastery camos, as well as the progression system from Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer, and a little bit about what we're gonna be getting in season one. So Yesterday, Call of Duty put out a blog post, and then they also put uh, another one out this morning. And now, uh, we're going to be going over both of these today. they got a lot of great information in here. This is probably going to be our last little bit of official information before the game releases. Uh, it's still possible they could release another blog post tomorrow, but I personally don't see it uh, with the game. You know, for them to release a blog post at 10 a.m. Pacific time, and then have the game come out 10 hours later, I think it's almost pointless. So I think this is the last one we're going to be getting until then. But uh, yeah, I mean, multiplayer is almost here. So let's go ahead and let's talk about it. So here we go. They talk about multiplayer. Uh, we're just going to skip to all the, the best parts of this. We're going to make this all you know, as short and sweet as we can. So first up, they talk about game modes. They say Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer offers two distinct mode categories at launch based on the type of maps they are played on. There's core maps and there is battle map modes. So core maps modes are 6v6. So on this one, uh, I'm not going to read the descriptions. I'm going to list off the modes that we have. So 6v6 core map modes, we have free for all, team deathmatch, domination, hardpoint, headquarters, control, ooh I'm really excited for control, prisoner rescue, knockout, and search and destroy. So now it's actually kind of interesting in here, somebody pointed this out, is that in one of these images that they showed off here, you can literally see like a, a tag here from somebody that looks like they're playing kill confirmed, right? There's a bunch of tags all over the map, there's like friendly tags as well as enemy tags. And I don't get it because, you know, they don't mention kill confirmed at all here, right? Like, let's go through these maps again or these modes again: free for all, TDM, domination, hardpoint, headquarters, control, prisoner rescue, knockout, and search and destroy. So there's literally nothing in here about kill confirmed. So why does that picture show dog tags from kill confirmed? So to me, that almost like specifies that hey, they will be adding in kill confirmed. Probably, my guess would be with, with Season 1, so that's my guess is they kind of slipped up and they're like, whoops, they accidentally included that. But uh, next up, they talk about battle map modes. These are up to 32v32, so we've got Ground War, that's pretty cool, as well as Ground War Invasion, that's pretty cool. And then they uh, they say they got some general mode and playlist notes. Some modes have an end on score limit, while others uh, end when the match timer runs out. In those cases, the team with the higher score wins the match. Other game modes considerations include the following. So featured, featured game modes change regularly with playlists often focused on new maps and modes. Variations of standard maps and modes may also apply here. They've got a quick play. Get into a match fast with your own personalized playlist. Use a quick play filter to select your favorite game modes. From then on, quick play will search for all available matches in those modes. Change your settings at any time to add or remove modes from the search. Next up, they've got a new type of mode coming to Modern Warfare 2. They call it Tier 1. A Tier 1 playlist is designated within a playlist's name and offers a more challenging experience compared to traditional multiplayer. Operators have less health and limited HUD elements and friendly fires on. These elements are consistent in all game modes that support the Tier 1 variant. So this is literally Hardcore. They've just renamed Hardcore. It's the same thing. We will have Hardcore back in this game, but for some reason they've renamed it to Tier 1. One. And then, you know, it's weird here. They, they basically like are trying to sell this as like a new feature, a brand new thing for Modern Warfare 2. It's like, oh, tier one. Here's what it is. When literally all they have to say is tier one equals hardcore. That's it. So, you know, if you were confused about that, you hop into Modern Warfare 2 and you're like, what is tier one? Just know it's hardcore. And then they've got a third person mode. We played this in the beta. That's pretty cool as well as they, uh, they changed it a little bit. So they say in this mode, the camera is set back over the shoulder of your operator. This gives a more perspective on your overall surroundings in exchange for less depth of field in front of you. It's great for seeing your operator in action and giving a different feel to the standard first person view. So they did put out an update to this. They said that uh, you're not gonna be able to like ADS unless you have a certain optic past, I wanna say it's like four times, is that uh, you're pretty much always gonna be locked into third person unless you're using essentially like a sniper or marksman rifle with an appropriate reticle on there. Uh, next up, they talk about core maps and battle maps. So they're split up into uh, three groups. You've got Almazra, 
Las Almas, and the rest of the world. So uh, they talk about this a little bit more here. If you guys want to read up and find all these details and stuff and really dive into this, you guys can do so. It'll be linked in the description. But basically, if you played the campaign, you know what Almazra is, you know what Las Almas is, and then they just say the rest of the world is, is the rest of it. So it's just maps that don't apply to these other two locales. Okay, next up, they're talking about perk packages. Ooh, here we go. They say, innovating on the perk system, Modern Warfare 2 introduces perk packages, which are equipped as a part of multiplayer loadout. Each package consists of four perks, two base perks, plus one bonus perk, and one ultimate perk. Operators begin each match with their two base perks, unlocking the bonus and ultimate perks over time with eliminations and assists, plus objective and tactical plays that help un to unlock them more quickly. The more active you are in a match, the sooner you'll have your full stack of four perks. The perks you'll see at launch with their original effects, which are subject to change post-launch, are as follows. In base perks, you got Overkill, Double Time, Battle Hardened, Scavenger, Bomb Squad, Tracker, Strong Arm, and an Extra Tactical. The bonus perks we have here are Resupply, Spotter, Cold-Blooded, Fast Hands, Hardline, and Focus. And then the ultimate perks we have here are High Alert, Ghost, Quick Fix, Overclock, Survivor, and Bird's Eye. So there we go. So those are the perks we have here. Kind of interesting. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff here with these perks. You know, if you played the beta, you basically already know how the perk system works in this game. But, uh, I mean, like they said here, you get two perks uh, right off the start, as well as you will be able to earn another two perks just by playing and just throughout your matches and stuff. Uh, you got field upgrades. Here we go. They talk about field upgrades. Um, they say that uh, the field upgrades are invaluable tools that offer an array of strategic advantages. They charge over time throughout the match, with some charging faster or slower, depending on their utility and power. They say at rank 45, you get the option to equip two field upgrades at the cost of a slow recharge rate on each. So the first one we have here is a tactical camera. We have an inflatable decoy, a DDoS, deployable cover, a trophy system, dead silence, a munitions box, a loadout drop, a portable radar, attack insert, battle rage, a recon drone, a smoke airdrop, suppression mine, and anti-armor rounds. That's pretty cool. So next up, they talk about kill streaks. So kill streaks in here, uh, they say getting eliminated sets your streak back to zero. You already know, all, you know how kill streaks work. But uh, they also in this game are offering kill streaks as well as score streaks. So you don't need a perk or anything to switch over to score streaks or to kill streaks or anything like that. You can literally just do that from the kill streak menu, and you can select it. Hey, do I want to to play? And I do I want to earn skill kill streaks or do I want to earn score streaks? So it's a little bit different, like numbers between them. So stuff will vary a little bit. Personally, I would prefer to just run score streaks all the time because I like to play the objective. But here we go. Let's talk about all the kill streaks slash score streaks that we have in the game. So first off at 4 kills and 500 score, we've got a UAV and a bomb drone. At 5 kills and 625 score, you got a counter UAV, a cluster mine, and a care package. At 6 kills and 750 score, you can unlock a precision airstrike, a cruise missile, and a mortar strike. At 7 kills or 875 score, you can unlock a sentry gun and an SAE, which they say is like a super precision airstrike. At 8 kills or 1000 score, you can unlock a VTOL jet, an Overwatch Hilo, and a Wilson HS, which is the, the little remote controlled thing. Uh, 10 kills and 1250 score, you have a stealth bomber, a chopper gunner, and an emergency airdrop. And then after that here at 12 kills or 1500 score, you have a gunship and you have an advanced UAV. And then lastly at 15 kills or 1875 score, you unlock a juggernaut. And this juggernaut, uh, they say, has is a super soldier with incredible health and armor that can only be down with tons of headshots or sustained explosive barrages. With the suit comes a minigun, which becomes available for use after the juggernaut perishes, a surefire power weapon in anyone's hands. That's kind of cool. It drops, so anybody can pick it up off the ground after you kill the juggernaut. That's really cool. They talked about some like different tactics and some new features and stuff coming to multiplayer. So they have an aquatic maneuvers, ledge hanging. So you guys can read up on, uh, on that stuff if you want to. But uh, that was the article that they put out yesterday. Really cool stuff. Lots of interesting stuff there. I mean, you guys, like I said, you guys can dive into that more so if you guys want to. But uh, today is really where we got the exciting stuff. And this is what I want to spend a majority of the video talking about. And this is talking about the camos and the XP and player progression. So here we go. They put out a huge blog post today. And, uh, and this was huge all over Twitter. So here is the very first image that they showed. This is the cover of it. And uh, they say, updated Call of Duty Modern 
Modern Warfare 2 launch progression overview, everything to complete before Season 1. They say there is more to explore after the 55 military ranks at launch, from fully upgrading the arsenal and operator roster to ranking up special ops kits, as well as even starting the ultimate journey towards weapon mastery. There are progression systems available in Modern Warfare 2 on Day 1. And they say, update this blog has been updated to show more accurate rendered artwork of the gold, platinum, poly, atomic, and Orion weapon camos. The renders may differ slightly from the in-game versions of these camos. Here we go. They say prepare for Season 1 during launch. Starting on October 28th, the official release date for the full Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 game. The game's multiplayer and co-op special ops modes go live alongside the campaign, which digital pre-order customers have early access to. Then there are 20 days between Modern Warfare 2's launch to the start of Season 1. On November 16th, Season 1 will introduce the free-to-play Call of Duty Warzone 2.0, which introduces the all-new DMZ experience and traditional Battle Royale modes. It will also bring the first major update to Modern Warfare 2, setting the stage for the first co-op raid coming mid-season. Across both games, a new battle pass system will be introduced, and seasonal progression, also known as prestiging, will return. The first 20 days between now and November 16th give you the ultimate opportunity to prepare for an incredible full year of content. So here we go, they talk about what the progression system is. They say, to begin with, Modern Warfare 2 brings you the familiar leveling system. You have 55 military ranks to complete, see below, each unlocking as you receive XP from actions you perform during in different matches. However, this blog ensures that you are well prepared to look beyond the traditional leveling system. Even if you somehow hit military rank 55 on day one, there are multiple ways to set yourself up for success in season one and beyond. So let's pause right there for a second. Uh, yeah, so they're just confirming here that there's only 55 levels at launch. That is it. It's not like how we had with Modern Warfare 2019. It's not like how we had with Cold War. And it's not like how we had with Vanguard. Because obviously, you know, the, the days of actual prestiges are long gone. You know, we're not going to have prestiging, actual prestiging in the Call of Duty game probably ever again. But uh, it's not like those games where those games had, you know, your initial 55 levels, but then they continued on towards something else afterwards. But uh, that's not the case. It looks like you literally just go from literally level 1 to 55, and then you are done. And they say, oh, hey, well, th it's only because this is like the preseason, you know. Once season 1 comes out, we're going to be getting prestiges and, and like le seasonal levels, right? Seasonal progression. But to me, that's whack, though, because it's like... 55 levels, and then it's interesting, though, that they, they point out here, they go, even if you somehow hit military rank 55 on day one, there's other ways that you can set yourself up for success in season one and beyond. I'm like, bro, what? So basically, they are acknowledging here, and they know that a lot of hardcore players are going to be able to complete all of the 55 levels, they're going to be able to max out all their XP in the first day, which I am planning on doing. I am personally planning on uh, getting to the max rank, trying to be the first in the world. We'll be streaming it here live on the channel later tonight, so make sure you guys tune in for that. But uh, trying to be the first people in the world to do that. But uh, I try to, I'm going to try and plan on being the first person in the world to do that, but also reach that level 55, that max rank, before the game even releases globally. That's my goal. So, yeah, that's uh, that's what I'm planning on. But I don't know. I mean, it kind of sucks. But then they also say, I mean, oh, there's other stuff you can do. So, I mean, they talk about other stuff that you can do here. You can unlock and you can uh, rank up, like, operators and stuff. Here we go. They say veterans of this traditional uh, rank system. For those who are not, your actions across all those game modes earn player XP, which ultimately unlocks the following items. Additional default loadouts, the ability to customize multiplayer loadouts, uh, weapon platforms, lethal and tactical equipment, and perks, field upgrades and kill streaks, yada yada yada. Uh, they also have daily and career challenges. So uh, for these daily and career challenges, they say both are great sources of player XP. Daily challenges give thousands of XP every 24 hours, while career challenges set up milestones to work towards throughout your experience in Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2.0, granting a massive amount of XP and cosmetic rewards such as calling cards upon completion. So the daily challenges, they say that daily challenges are a set of four challenges that reset on a fixed schedule. See the in-game timer for details. As well as uh, then you also have uh, an ultimate challenge afterwards. So they say uh, the, the three daily challenges are from three distinct categories: a general challenge that may not require much change in playstyle, a weapon challenge that focuses on specific weapon categories, a special challenge that encourages exploration with specific loadout features. And they say after completing these three daily challenges, a bonus challenge unlocks. It is a split objective that allows you to make progress towards one of two objectives. Once one of the two objectives is completed, the bonus challenge's XP reward is given. 
in. And they say each multiplayer daily challenge, as well as the bonus XP challenge, only rewards XP. And they also have uh, special ops. Uh, these ones also give you bonus daily challenges and stuff like that. You also have career challenges. Uh, so you got career challenges for multiplayer. You also have career challenges for special ops. And then they say once season one is live and beyond, expect there to be additional challenges unlocked at prestige level milestones that offer more difficult objectives and XP rewards. Next up, they talk about weapon platforms. So this is uh, basically going through the whole thing with gunsmith and receivers and universal attachments, all that kind of stuff. So I'm not going to dive into this too much because it's kind of a whole huge thing. But it is interesting that they uh, they showcase this in this blog. They talk about weapon tuning and advanced gunsmith customization. Reaching max level with a gunsmithable weapon will grant access to weapon tuning, allowing for further attachment customization. Once unlocked, a tune button will present on equipped tunable attachments. Selecting this button will take you to the tuning menu. Here you'll find a radar graph representing that detachment stats as well as two sliders with opposing attributes on either end. Inching towards one attribute will generally decrease that attribute at the opposing side. So it's suggested to take great care during this process to find the tuning values that make your attachment perform at its peak efficiency. So say for example barrel could have two sliders for weight and length. Adjusting the weight slider affects both movement speed and recoil. Adjusting the length slider affects both aim down sights time and damage range. Adjusting both allows for a unique combination on effects on all four attributes. So that's pretty cool. And uh, this is the image they showed for that. So obviously, like you're, you're gonna pull it in, you know, certain directions here and go. Okay, maybe I want more mobility. Okay, maybe I want a little bit more range. What about fire rate? And once you, you know, you're pulling it in one direction, it's gonna slip on other directions as well. So kind of cool. I do actually like this. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what the community can do here. And uh, I feel like this will almost introduce like a brand new meta to the game where uh, there's going to be so much in here that like it'll be really interesting that you can basically finally tune attachments and weapon stats here on your own. You can literally just go, okay, I want like no recoil and just boom, make it a laser. I want no recoil and I want a ton of damage. Okay. And just you know, design your gun that way. I think that'd be pretty cool. And I'm interested to see how it's like actually plays out within game next up they talk about special ops missions and you got weekly completion stars so in special ops you guys are able to get stars from completing missions as well as uh, you also have special ops kits and stuff so they say uh, take the special ops mission low profile for example one special ops star is earned by completing the mission two special ops stars earned by completing the mission with 20 within 25 minutes and three stars are earned by completing the mission within 15 minutes after earning the maximum number of stars three on a mission you can no longer earn Earn additional stars for the week solely through mission completion. They have daily challenges for additional stars, so you can rank all this stuff up, and uh, you can get progress towards your kit tiers, which is interesting. I talked about that in a separate video. I'm going to dive more into special ops and all the details, everything you need to know about that when it actually fully comes out tomorrow. So make sure you guys check out that video. And then uh, they talk about operators. So there's going to be a ton of operators within the game. Seriously, so many, and you can be able to rank them all up. Some of them are exclusive though to certain things. So so there's four operators you can unlock through the campaign early access as well as a whole bunch of others some of them they're only exclusive to the uh, the red team 141 operator pack part of the modern warfare 2 vault edition and then oni which is exclusive to playstation but here we go let's save the best for last here we go they say for completionists camo challenges so this is really exciting i do want to point something out here and this is that it appears that treyarch is actually the ones who have designed the camos for this game which is really cool so i'm excited to see they say the uh they they put out uh somebody put out a tweet saying something like apparently this game has over like 180 plus base camos throughout the entire game so that's really cool but here we go they say at some point before season one especially if you're among our most dedicated players you may think you've unlocked everything in the game you've reached military rank 55 you have access to all launch weapons throughout every launch weapon platform and you've un unlocked every attachment that can be earned within those specific platform progression trees plus you might also have a base operator and a tiered up at least once uh, a special ops tier kit to tier five now you can get a head start on two of the biggest weapon progression features that you could last you far beyond launch camo challenges and weapon mastery weapon camos are cosmetic patterns that cover the majority of each weapon and are earned via camo challenges since original modern warfare game color 4 modern warfare in 2007 every main Call of Duty game has included this feature with some variation of structure. 
here we go. Uh, they say that Modern Warfare 2's camo ch uh, system challenge will be streamlined significantly and will offer more rewards than in previous years. They say its goal is to give you those mastery camos, gold, platinum, and more sooner while granting more universal base camos with a longer end game journey, providing true weapon mastery. So here's how it works. In Modern Warfare 2, camos are split into two groups. You have base camos. Any weapon can uh, equip a base camo once unlocked via a specific weapon's base camo challenge. In other words, base camos are universally unlocked across all weapons by completing a challenge on the road to a weapon's first mastery camo. There will be 180 plus unique base camos available at launch, with more to be added with each new weapon that comes in post-launch seasons. And then, besides the base camos, we have mastery camos. These are unlocked only for a specific weapon and have four unique designs, gold, platinum, Polyatomic and Orion. The gold camo challenge for each weapon is available once all of its base camo challenges are completed. The platinum camo challenge for each weapon is available once the gold camo is unlocked across a minimum number of weapons in each category. The polyatomic camo challenge for each weapon is available once the platinum camo is unlocked across a minimum of 51 weapons. And the Orion camo is a reward for unlocking polyatomic camo across a minimum of 51 weapons. It is also uh, automatically granted on every weapon that earns the Orion camo camo past its minimum requirements. So it's interesting here. Um, it does not say here though that the camo is unlocked once you complete all the base camo challenges. So that's the interesting thing about this is this is how it differs. So it'll be kind of similar to how Modern Warfare 2019 worked is that it says the gold camo challenge becomes available once you've completed all the other camos for that weapon. So once you complete all the camos, then you have one more challenge or potentially multiple that then you have to complete those to unlock gold. And then you gotta do that across uh, a whole bunch of minimum number of weapons in each category to get platinum to unlock the, the challenge for you to be able to unlock platinum and the same thing goes for polyatomic is once you have enough platinum camos on a minimum of 51 weapons then it will unlock the challenge for you to finally unlock that camo and then the same thing for the final camo which is orion and it's a, a reward they say for unlocking polyatomic camo across 51 weapons and they say it is automatically granted so this one is not a challenge the other three are challenges but orion is just one that you will automatically unlock once you get polyatomic and you've completed the polyatomic challenge on 51 weapons so pretty cool uh, it's interesting that they you know they've done this that uh, it's basically gold diamond and dark matter and then another one on top of that as well so pretty cool and they say each mastery cam is also tied to an additional challenge for required for weapon mastery on each weapon which can be done in parallel with the camo challenge journey detail below here we go they say step one complete base camo challenges get universal camos for all weapons in call of duty modern warfare 2019 each weapon had 10 base camo set challenges completing these unlocked it all 100 base camos but only for that weapon and every base camo across all weapons was the same in modern warfare 2 the base camo challenge system offers uh, between one and four challenges per weapon and each challenge unlocks a new camo to use across all weapons just with the launch weapon roster alone, there will be more than 180 plus unique camos to earn at launch. Each gunsmithable weapon, that is, a weapon that has attachments, has four base camo challenges. The first is a basic kill count challenge, which is available as soon as the weapon is unlocked. The other three are unlocked at specific weapon levels, roughly spaced out in thirds up to the max level. Note, none of these uh, have specific attachment requirements, allowing you to complete these with whatever configuration you see fit. However, you might find certain attachment combos nations more effective at completing these challenges compared to others so that's kind of cool so it's not like we're gonna be doing the same thing where it's like oh hey you know you got to get 150 kills without any attachments you got to get 150 kills with five attachments and an optic oh you got to get 150 kills with these specific attachments or whatever so here we go talk about this they uh, talk about an example for us they say for example the m4 has the following base camo challenges get redacted kills so i'm just gonna say x get x kills with the m4 unlocks the x Camo. Get X or more kills with the M4 without reloading. X number of times unlocks the X camo. The, ca the challenge is unlocked at weapon level 7. The next one is get X double kills with the M4 and it unlocks the X camo. The challenge is unlocked at weapon level 13. And then the fourth one here is get X triple kills with the M4 unlocks the X camo. The challenge is unlocked at its max weapon level, which is level 20. So kind of interesting. Um, none of these seem hard. I mean, if this is just the case for the M4, if this is the same across all the assault rifles it'll be interesting to see but uh i mean you got to get what kills kills without reloading 
and you got to get double kills and triple kills like that's it and then once they say here we go you say you complete all these above challenges uh you will unlock the m4 gold camo challenge which is the first mastery camo challenge so they don't say exactly what this gold camo challenge is but they say each non-gunsmithable weapon that is weapons without attachments have one base camo unlocked by completing a basic kill count challenge so for example a weapon that uh, explains this is the RPG-7. The RPG has one base camo challenge, so it is just to get X number of kills with the RPG and it unlocks you X camo. So they say just completing that one challenge unlocks the RPG's gold camo challenge. So that's really cool. I've uh, always kind of found launchers to be a pain in the butt in recent years just because they've had so many challenges and it's like, oh, I've got to destroy enemy kill streaks that are on the ground. I got to destroy enemy kill streaks in the air. I got to kill, you know, a number of enemies. I got to get like defender kills, like all this stuff. And it can ma honestly make the, the launchers kind of a grind. But if it's literally just get kills with it. So any weapon that does not have attachments, the challenge for it will automatically just be get kills. So that's pretty cool. That uh, it makes it a lot easier. Um, I'm sure on some of these weapons that are probably like lock on only that uh, it'll just be instead of kills, it'll just be get, you know, however many kill streaks, destroy however many kill streaks or something like that. I don't know. That would be my guess. And they say this new base camo system applies to all post launch weapons. It can be edited within the gunsmith. The weapon will have four base camo challenges. If it cannot, the weapon will only have one base camo challenge. That means technically each season will introduce new base camos to use across all weapons in addition to the weapon itself. Again, this new system means that there are fewer challenges to, for each weapon, but more base camouflages overall and a faster way to get each individual weapon to the next step of Mastery Gold Camel. Next up, they say unlock the Gold Mastery Camel, and this is what it looks like. They say once every base camo challenge is completed on a specific weapon, the first of its three Mastery Camo challenges, Gold, becomes available. Every weapon in Modern Warfare 2 has the same Gold Camo challenge, getting a certain number of kills, two to three usually, with the weapon without dying a certain number of times. So it's not bloodthirsty, they say it's either two or three kills, usually, with the weapon without dying. So that is a very easy gold camo challenge. I think that's that's pretty cool. Um, they didn't say how many, but uh, I'm wondering if, you know, is it going to be kind of difficult? Like, say, for assault rifles, you're going to have to get, like, 50 of them, 50 kills, uh, where you have to get, like, three kills without dying. Honestly, that wouldn't be that hard, but, uh, I mean, that's a, a fairly easy and a fairly good gold camo challenge, so I kind of like that. They say doing so unlocks the gold camo for that weapon, and only that weapon. They say at this point you can begin with the weapon mastery journey, but you may want to unlock the gold camo on more weapons to get the most out of weapon mastery, or, if you're wise enough, you could be doing both at the same time. So next up is step three. They say finish a specific number of gold camo challenges in each weapon category and get access to platinum camo challenges. So here we go. They say platinum camo challenges are tied to specific weapon categories. They become available once a certain number of gold camos are earned across weapons within a category. So with the categories we have are assault rifles, battle rifles, SMGs, LMGs, marksman rifles, snipers, sidearms, launchers, and melee weapons. So this one, platinum is essentially diamond camo. So if you guys remember diamond camo, from previous games that's what this is you basically just have to get gold camo on maybe not every assault rifle but i would assume here at, at least at launch is that you'll probably need to get it at least all of the assault rifles gold at launch for a new in order to get platinum would be my guess and they, i mean they further go on to explain this they say in other words if there's a new assault rifle that arrives in season one you can technically skip one of the assault rifle gold camo challenges available at launch and still unlock platinum camo challenges for the category so there we go that confirms that uh, at least at launch before season one you will need to get every assault rifle gold in order to get platinum every battle rifle gold in order to get platinum so there we go for step four is to finish a minimum of 51 platinum mastery challenges get access to polyatomic camo challenges so they don't detail what the platinum camo challenge is so that's kind of interesting uh, we'll have to find out when the game actually comes out what that camo challenge is but uh, yeah, so basically you gotta just get 51 weapons gold and then complete the Platinum Mastery Challenge on all those weapons. And once you do that, you will get the access to the Polyatomic Camo Challenge. So this one looks pretty freaking cool. Kind of reminds me a lot of Dark Matter. Uh, I'm interested to see what it actually looks like in game. They say once Platinum Camo is unlocked on 51 weapons, the final Camo Challenge is unlocked, Polyatomic. This final Mastery Camo Challenge is yet another challenge specific to each weapon category. For example, the M4's Polyatomic Camo Challenge is different compared to the RPG-7's Polyatomic Camo Challenge. Completing this challenge on a weapon unlocks the Polyatomic Camo for it and counts towards the unlock requirements for the Ultimate Mastery Camo. 
So they don't detail what these challenges are, they only detail what they were for gold, so that's unfortunate. But then lastly we have the ultimate mastery camo, Orion. Once the polyatomic camo is unlocked on 51 weapons, which can be the 51 weapons at launch, or a combination of 51 weapons available at launch and introduced in post-launch seasons, every weapon that has polyatomic camo will automatically be granted the Orion camo. They say this is your official mark of completion for weapon camos, after originally unlocking Orion across 51 weapons, earning the polyatomic camo on any additional weapons automatically grants the Orion camo as well. So there we go. Uh, they say for completionists, they got Weapon Mastery, whether it was a later season of Modern Warfare, the original Modern Warfare 2 from 2009, you may recall something known as Weapon Mastery. After unlocking a Mastery Camo, Gold, Platinum, Polyatomic, or Orion on a weapon, you gain access to that Weapons Mastery Challenge. Each Weapon Mastery Challenge involves earning a set number of kills with a specific weapon while a specific Mastery Weapon Camo is equipped. So that's kind of cool. So here's the, uh, the graph and the, the image that they detail for this. So they say Gold Mastery, you have to unlock gold camo and you also have to get 100 kills while using gold platinum you gotta unlock platinum and get 200 kills while using platinum uh, for polyatomic you have to unlock polyatomic and then get 300 kills while using polyatomic and then orion you gotta unlock orion and then get 400 kills while using orion <laughs> so man this really makes you work for this and uh yeah i mean so even after you know you unlock the, the camo you still have to go back and play with that weapon and use it more and get more kills with that camo on. And the interesting thing about this is you have to run four separate camos so they don't stack. So you have to do this four separate times. So across the board, uh, you are going to need to get a thousand kills total with the mastery camos, not including any of the other kills that you've gotten with the weapons, at least here for this uh, the F-TAC recon, you're gonna need to get a thousand kills with the mastery camos equipped in order to get the uh, the completionist thing here. So you get a weapon charm, the F-TAC recon, weapon mastery weapon charm. So yeah, dude, that's freaking crazy. They say completing each mastery challenge on a weapon awards a new calling card and emblem based on that weapon. Completing all four mastery challenges on a weapon unlocks a weapon charm based on that weapon. So there we go. Uh, they have a little recap here, but uh, pretty much basically what it is is that, you know, you only have the 55 levels at launch, but there's a bunch of other stuff you can do. You can unlock and rank up your operators. Uh, you can unlock and uh, rank up weapons and stuff. Of course, get to level 55, uh, as well as you also can start earning all these weapon camos and doing the weapon mastery camo challenges as well. So, yeah, there's a lot of stuff to work on here and a lot of stuff for you to do. But at the same time, I'm just like, but there's only 55 levels. Like, it kind of discourages me from unlocking these challenges and using all this stuff because I know that there's a lot of XP here that you're going to miss out on because I'm going to be stuck at level 55 until two weeks, until Season 1 comes out. So I'm almost tempted to just, you know, as soon as I get 55, just stop playing the game and just save all these challenges, all my progress, until it starts counting again towards ranking up, towards prestiging and other challenges and whatever else. So that's just me, though. But, uh, yeah, that's it, guys. That is a huge, huge article here. A lot of stuff, a lot of information about Modern Warfare 2. I hope you guys enjoyed. A lot of crazy stuff. We're going to be jumping into multiplayer really, really soon. Literally within the next 12 hours, we'll be playing Modern Warfare 2. So make sure you guys hop over and watch the stream. be really exciting. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed, give it a thumbs up and get subscribed to the channel. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.